Welcome to the penultimate concert of the, the fall season. And these people need no introduction, but I'll introduce them anyway. John Roberts, Andy Brunig, Pete, Fred Brunig. <laughs> I only know them 30 years, you know? <laughs> Fred Brunig, Andy Davis, and Keith Murphy, and Helen, Helen, <laughs> God. And, and my dear friend, Heather Wood. <laughs> and Keith Murphy! Oh yeah, I was just gonna say, thank you, Janet. Well, it's a real pleasure to be here. What a lovely space. You know, all the years we came over to do Noel St. Clair in this neighborhood, we were never in this room. So uh, I know Fred and I came in and said, what a lovely space. And I asked about the public library. And Joy said, well, this had been a church at one point, and then a library, and then a restaurant with a bar, and now a, a folk uh, venue for concerts. And I thought, you know, Tony Barron, would have been comfortable in any of those spaces. Because <laughs> he lived in all of those spaces, yeah. and he had a way of just weaving the entire year into song and custom. So a number of years ago, I wrote this little song, and I'm very happy that Tony got to hear it over the years, on a couple of occasions. And there's a chorus, of course, so I'll start with the chorus. I'm not gonna teach it, because you all will just pick it up, and these folks will pick it up. A man for every season. He's a man for every season, pulling the world along, singing songs for any reason. The melody sounds clear and strong. In spring with mud and daffodil, the bells of Norwich ringing still, and dancers find their place by will. Good luck tossed in the fiddler's till. He's, He's a, a man, man for every season, pulling the world along, singing songs for any reason. The melody sounds clear and strong. Then summer day without an end in pub with family neighbors friends this world's a garden we must tend with music broken hearts to mend he's a man for every season pulling the world along singing songs for any reason the melody sounds clear and strong Colors, wind and frost Remind us of the times we lost These ships out on the waters tossed Our shanty man has paid the cost He's a man for every season Pulling the world along Singing songs for any reason The melody sounds clear and dark, that precious jewel calls forth the mummers and their fool, with carols feasting burning yule, forgiveness and the poor must rule. He's a man for every season, pulling the world along, singing songs for any reason. Sound. 
So, so spring. Spring is the first season. Tony was a real idea man, a really big picture man. And shortly after we uh, developed Noel Sing We Clear, he immediately started looking at the wealth of material around Easter and spring and uh, pagan and Christian customs. And we put together To Welcome in the Spring. And uh, one of the songs that uh, I used to love in that, in that program is the one we'll do next called Come Lasses and Lads. And it was, uh, he particularly liked it because it mentioned a couple of English country dance tunes, Selinger's Round, which is pretty well known, and another one, Packington's Pound. And we'll, uh, we worked in the, the Selinger's into the into a little, bit, little packed part of the melody into the song. And then uh, we went into a second, um, used Packington's Pound as the sort of make a med uh, medley. So, um, <laughs> that was the one. Not a lot of room up here. Um, the, I have a special memory of this song because as Tony and I did a little tour in the early 80s on the West Coast, uh, just the two of us, we went and did a bunch of uh, dance workshops and I called a couple of dances, we did a few concerts, and uh, we used this song as one of the, one of the ones in that little repertoire. And um, the, um, of course it talks about a, you know, the fiddler standing by and all that sort of thing. And um, the, but the, the, the particular memory, memory that I have of this is when we were running through it once before a, um, a, a radio, live radio show. And we were at the apartment of our friend Brad Foster, who was living in San Francisco at the time. And Brad had just gotten a dog and named it Tuppence. And at the end of the verse, just the penultimate verse, as Tony used to say, the word tuppence is repeated over and over, and the puppy just got so excited. <laughs> and you know what puppies do is, you know, when they lose control, so, you know, Brad was pretty, was okay about cleaning it all up, but... Anyway. <laughs> And lads, say keep your dads and away to the maple hung Where all of the pairs are sweethearts there and the fiddle standing by Then Willie shall dance with Jane and Jenny has got the jump And everyone shall trip it to trip it, trip it up and down And everyone shall trip it to trip it, trip it up and down Let's start, says Dick, I right, says Nick, and I'll pretty the fiddler play. Our greed says you, and so says Lou, for this is a holiday. Then everyone did doff their hats unto the cats, and then they bowed and curtsied, bowed and curtsied on the grass. And then they bowed and curtsied, bowed and curtsied on the grass. Begin, says Matt, I right, says Nat, we'll lead up Packington's pound. No, no, says Nolly, and so says Dolly, we'll first have Selinger's round. Then everyone began to put it around about, and then they all did step it to step it, step it in and out. And then they all did step it to step it, step it in and out. You're out, says Dick, no, I, says Nick, to a fiddler played it wrong. Tis true, says you, and so says Lou, and so says everyone. Fiddler then began to play the tune again, and so they all did jig it to jig it, jig it once again, and so they all did jig it to jig it, jig it once again. Says Matt, why three? Says Nat, for well, that is a lover's plea. But then instead of three, they kissed for half a score. And then in kindness, 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 kissed as many more. And then in kindness, 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 kissed as many more. Well, where did they stay for the whole of the day? And they tired the fiddler quite with the dancing and play without any pay from morning until night. They told the fiddler then that they'd pay them for the play. And each 
a tuppence, 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 give him and went away. And each a tuppence, 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 give him and went away. Good night, says Harry. Good night, says Mary. Good night, says Dolly to John. Good night, says Lou to their sweetheart Hugh. Good night, says everyone. Some walked and some did run. Some loitered on the way. And they found themselves with kisses twelve to meet next holiday. They found themselves with kisses twelve to meet next holiday. In uh, 1971, when we were still graduate students at Cornell, Tony and I made a trip to England with our friend Jeff Warner. And Jeff introduced us at various places. We drove around the country for a, a, a few days, and we visited Peter Bellamy in Norfolk and Royston Wood in Suffolk, who were two members of the young tradition, who were sort of, uh, we were great fans of their singing. We didn't meet at the time the third member of that trio, Miss Heather Wood. <laughs> One of the things that Peter did that we got very involved with were, were, were his uh, settings of uh, Rudyard Kipling poetry. And this is this is one of the one of the very first ones it's he on did, right? It's on the first album. The it's title of the first Kipling album. It, it, it's it pretty much opens the uh, the book uh, Puck of Pook's Hill, uh, tales, and each one introduced by a poem. And uh, uh, Peter set a lot of these. So this is a, as soon as I find where my notes are. This is called a tree song. Of all the trees that grow so fair, all England to adore, greater are none beneath the sun than oak and ash and thorn. Sing oak and ash and thorn. Clay lived many a day, or ever in Nias began. Ash of the loam was a lady at home, when Brute was an outlaw man. And a thorn of the down saw new Troy town, for which was London born. Witness hereby the ancient trial of oak and ash and thorn. Sing oak and ash and thorn, good sirs, on when a midsummer's born. Churchyard moles, he breathed the mighty bow. All the fish years the wise men choose and beach for cops also. But when you have killed and your bonnet is spilled and your shoes are clean and worn, back you must be for all that you need to oak and ash and thorn. Sing oak and ash and thorn, good sirs, all on a midsummer's morn. Surely we sing of no little thing in oak and ash and thorn. Ellen, she hateth mankind and waiteth till every gust be laid to drop a limb on the head of him that anyway trusts her shade. 
of us, whether allowed to be sober or sad, mellow with ale from the horn. He'll take no wrong if he lieth along the oak and ash and thorn. Sing oak and ash and thorn, sirs, for the midsummer's morn. Surely we sing of no little thing in oak and ash and thorn. Oh, do not tell the priest our plight, he would call it a sin. But we've been out in the woods all night a conjuring summer in, and we bring you good news by word of mouth, good news for cattle and corn. Now is the sun come up from the south by oak and ash and corn. Sing oak and ash and corn, good sirs, on the midsummer's morn. Surely we sing of no little thing in oak and ash and Sing oak and ash and corn, good sons, all on a midsummer's morn. England shall buy till judgment time by oak and ash and seasons of spring and then as John and Heather were leading that oak and ash and thorn I sort of could hear Tony he got such pleasure explaining all the seasonal connections of these songs and I remember Noel he got a strange pleasure for some reason of pointing out that the holly was the of course the tree associated with midwinter and it symbolized the uh, life cycle of Jesus as well as the evergreen but that uh, the oak was the king of summer. And in the Christian tradition, John the Baptist was apparently burned on a pile of oak branches. And Tony loved telling stories like that. <laughs> he also loved to explain the calendar, but he wasn't always so good at it. He loved to try, didn't he, John? That's right. <laughs> Julian, so, Gregorian, all of them. We would be quite puzzled hearing a different explanation every night. <laughs> I think we, fi we finally decided, actually, that if you if you try to measure the year by the sun and the moon, they sort of disagree 12, 13 days, roughly, and that the ancients just decided to stay drunk for those days. <laughs> and we all finally agreed that was the most scientifically correct explanation <laughs> of the whole thing. Well, so spring, summer, um, Here's a, a song associated with the Christmas season. One thing Tony really liked was promoting the idea of these customs getting into schools. And of course, he was married to Margaret Dale, who was a marvelous teacher for decades in Southern Vermont. And I was a music teacher, and Tony and Margaret Dale would often share with me little, nice little pieces of folklore that weren't Christian, um, that would be really nice to introduce to the schools with these really rich traditions behind them. And one little poem I remember getting, I think, from either Tony or Margaret Dale was from The Wind in the Willows, but it was just the first, the first stanza as a nice sort of recitation. Villagers all, this frosty tide, let your doors swing open wide, though wind may follow and snow beside. Yet draw us in by your fire divide, joy shall be yours in the morning. And it's such a lovely secular sentiment of just community and the warmth of, of the season. Well, I did that, I set, did this setting of it for my teachers at one of my schools that we sang for the students, um, just the first couple of verses, but it's really quite a Christian uh, carol. So I ended up setting it for the whole thing and sharing it with Noel, and we ended up putting it in the show. Tony really liked it. John really liked singing it, and he would have sung it tonight, but he said he had enough to sing, and, he, and then I might as well take a chance to sing it. So I'm going I'm well, to try to... You did write it. I did write it, <laughs> but I love the way you sing it, John, but I'm going to do my best. But anyway, I just wanted to read. Uh, then we were going to do a big concert. I think it was the last live Noel show we did in Brattleboro in 2019, and we had a lovely evening and I did a little research on this song and I found this passage that introduces the, the text in The Wind in the Willows and of course it's the field mice who come singing this carol. So I mean it's a powerful choir. And uh, the description of what they sang, it says, 
Um, uh, now then, one, two, three, and forthwith their shrill little voices uprose on the air, singing one of the old-time carols that their forefathers composed in fields that were fallow and held by frost, or went snowbound in chimney corners and handed down to be sung in miry streets to lamp-lit windows at Yule time. And I thought, what a description of the Noel repertoire. Yes. <laughs> and so, um, so here it is, it's called Villa Here's All. And we're gonna, these are the field mice over here. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that means I'm rat or something. Oh, wait, you can switch on this one. You guys set? Yep. Okay. Running play. I move, running play. Yeah. <laughs> All this frosty tide, let your door swing open wide. Though wind may follow and snow beside, yet draw us in by your fire to bide. The joy shall be yours. Joy shall be yours. Joy shall be yours in the morning. Joy shall be yours. This seems the appropriate time to introduce Keith Murphy. <laughs> Keith lived directly across the street from Tony. <laughs> it's quite, it was quite the neighborhood. Uh, Scott Ainsley, the blues guitarist, was next door. Fred lived just round the corner. Six doors away, six. Tony would always say. <laughs> Don't go more than six doors. <laughs> so. Rehearsing was very convenient. <laughs> Post oil. This is this has been one of our favorite of the uh, sort of apocryphal uh, Noel songs, the, the apocryphal carols, 
as we did over however many, what, 40 years we did Noel Singletary. And uh, we'd sort of come up with different versions of the same song from different places and from different singers. And this was always our favorite version of the Cherry Tree Carol, the version from the Ritchie family of uh, Gene Ritchie of Viper, Kentucky. When Joseph was an old man, an old man was he. He married the Virgin Mary, the Queen of Galilee. He married the Virgin Mary, the Queen of Galilee. As Joseph and Mary walked through an orchard glow, here are apples and cherries, as red as any blood. Here are apples and cherries, as red as any blood. As Joseph and Mary walked through an orchard tree, here are apples and cherries, as thick as might be seen, here are apples and cherries, as thick as might be seen. Then up spoke sweet Mary, so meek and so mild, Joseph gathered me some cherries, for I am with child, Joseph gathered
to be singing on that, Keith. Thank you. Um, chair, the, um, what are we doing? Holly and the Holly Ivy. Holly and the Ivy. Cherry tree in the head. Holly and the Ivy was the, uh, one of the songs that uh, Tony said he used to get hate mail. <laughs> when, when, we, when we change, this is the original, we'll do the original version tonight that we did back in 1975 to start with, and for about 10 years, and then when we found a new version, thought, oh, this is cool, nobody wanted to hear it. <laughs> but we sort of, you know, we sort of forced it on for a couple of years, well, you were there, you know. <laughs> then, then we found uh, another, then we found then another Then we found one. another one. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't like that either. Yeah. 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 This has always been the favorite. It's uh, not, not necessarily the most well-known, except in people we know. <laughs> We're just going to do a blast out, no holds by version. Woo! No arranging. Just raw Noel. Raw Noel. Yeah. Two, three. comment on that. Tony loved the phrase band sound <laughs> and we often would have a piece that we might arrange a few of the harmonies. Uh, of course Tony and John would know all the words. Fred and I have been Tony, talking. Tony would know all the words. Yeah, Tony would know. <laughs> Fred and I are often asked by people, oh do that one time to remember the poor. And we just played on it. We, you know, we, we need to learn those songs, Fred. But anyway, Tony loved the phrase band sound and on a piece like that there was no arranging. It was just band sound, and it would just cut us loose to just have fun as a dance band. So now we have something very different. 
Um, my wife, Robin, is here with my daughter, Emma. And back in 19... <laughs> yeah, Robin was always good about making cookies for Noel and making sure that they were ones that Tony could eat when he was gluten-free. Although Andy learned that he had to say, when uh, Robin would also make them for, for sale for, in bakeries, and I had to learn to say, how much is that one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to mention that in 1989, and before I knew Robin, she went up to the Champlain Valley Folk Festival where Tony was singing, and uh, on Sunday morning he was part of a hymn sing, and he sang this next piece that we're going to do called, uh, called Captain Kid, but that's a reference to the melody, not the text. It's an anonymous text, a very pantheistic text. And Robin was very taken with this. She didn't really know Tony. She knew of him. She knew that Tony didn't know her from, from anything. But she went up and asked him about it. And very quickly, Tony was talking about the song and about this little church in southern Vermont called the Guilford Community Church. And this magnificent pastor that he was very fond of, Shirley. Uh, he even wrote a song about Shirley, uh, Shirley Crockett called Shirley of Guilford which was a bit of an echo of uh, Hildegard of Bingham and Julian of Norwich. And, you know, he was convinced she was a modern, you know, she was a very mystical, wonderful leader. But um, Robin was really taken by his generosity and, and his love to just share a very deep connection he had with this song. So when we were doing this program, I suggested it. It's a three-parter. So this one we never did with Tony, um, but it's a three-part from the Southern Harmony. Uh, called Captain Kidd. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> Through the, all the world below, God is seen all around. Search hills and valleys through, there he's found. The growing of the corn, the in green there he's seen see springs of water rise fountains flow rivers run the mist below the skies hides the sun then down the rain doth pour the ocean it doth roar and dash against the shore, all to praise in their lays, that God that ne'er declines his designs. The sun, to my surprise, speaks of God as he flies. The comets in their blaze give him praise. The shining of the stars, the moon as it appears, his sacred name declares, see them shine all divine. The shades in silence prove God's above. Then let my station be here on earth as I see the sacred one in three all agree through all the world is made the forest and the glade nor let me be afraid though I dwell on the hill since nature's works declare God is there. Well, after that, I think we just have to do a drinking song. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> and, all part uh, of nature, John. All part of nature. Tony and I sang a lot of drinking songs over the years. 
we, we actually consumed quite a quantity of beer in our younger days. It, it was known. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, uh, this is one of the ones that we, uh, we, we did a lot. If we were doing a set of drinking songs, this was always there. It's the, uh, that sort of English anthem, uh, John Barleycorn. There are dozens of versions of John Barleycorn. And we found this one in a book of folk songs. Uh, collected in, in Bedfordshire in England and, and learned it quite early on. We sang it, uh, we sang it a lot. Fall la 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 is a lovely day. Fall la 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 is the, is the chorus. Uh, say about this, a, a team of uh, Morris dancers came to the Marlboro Morris Day. Oh, here we go. <laughs> came to the Marlboro Morris Ale one year. Uh, I think they were, it was the... From, they came over from England. I think it was the, the uh, West Key of Instrument. D, John. Key of D. Key of D. B. B. B is in boy. The train. The, I, I know, but I'm trying to see. The, <laughs> see the, uh, and, and they were going to sing us the real English folk songs, the old, old versions. And they, uh, they sang one that we knew already. And then they sang this version of John Barleycorn. And said, yeah, we know that. <laughs> Wasn't Tony one of the founders of the Morris Ale? He the was Marlboro. the founder of the Marlboro Morris Ale, I have to say, yes. yes. Still going on. It's still, still going, going on. on. Yeah. He's still running it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, okay. yeah, some Fine. That's some help, exactly. <laughs> Great long flails to cut his skin from bone. 
Surely of Guilford, so. <laughs> so for a time um, at the Guilford Church, we had a trio of choir directors, which included Tony Barron was one, Peter Amidon was one, and I was one, and it was a wonderfully creative time. It went on for a long time, and it was a, we had a very lively choir, can you guess? <laughs> um, it was simply called, and Tony was really one of the architects of this, the nine o'clock choir. If you were there at nine o'clock, you were in the choir. <laughs> you sat with your family, but when you came up to do any singing, you just came out of the pew. So it was a very, there was no, no evening, week, night rehearsal, no robes, no choir loft. It was the most, you know, all barriers to participation had been removed. And uh, so here's one that Tony really loved and that we did um, every spring. Julian, uh, Actually, yeah. one of the things that Tony always was uh, hoping for in the Guilford Church was to have a choir of the whole, which is what I feel we have here tonight. Yeah. 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 And there were certain songs that became the choir of the whole, and I think that the Bells of Norwich was, was one of them, or Bells of Norwich, of course. So here we go, right? Uh, and, that we got a special dispensation from the authorities to do this two accordion number. <laughs> Are we ready, Fred? Ready. Three. Oh, 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 oh. 
Toronto who wrote that song was also responsible for the Lord of the Dance. And uh, he used to sing around the clubs in London. He wasn't a Christian and he wasn't a vicar, but he was a very spiritual man and a lovely person. Another very spiritual man and lovely person was Bob Copper of the yeah. Copper family. And when Tony and I first started singing, we decided, you know, well, we're going out and, uh, and singing places, and what could we learn that's easy and quick? <laughs> and, the, and in two-part harmony, because that's what we had. <laughs> and the Copper family had recorded, the two cousins, Bob and Ron, had recorded most of a whole album of two-part harmony songs um, with, the, w with Bob singing the melody and, uh, and Ron singing the bass. And so there was an instant repertoire. The other half of the repertoire was sea shanties and such, and we'll get onto those in the second half. In 2002, I think it was, but Bob passed away, what, 2004, I think. Uh, but a couple of years before that, he'd come over uh, with the family at, on tour. We didn't meet him uh, I, I, until about uh, the, the early 1990s. We missed him, Tony and I had missed him on that first trip to England when Jeff Warner went off to stay with the Coppers and we went to our respective families. But um, we did get to meet them all later and we became very good friends. And I was honored to be asked by the New York Folk Song so Club Society to sing bass with Bob who had uh, stayed behind for an extra few days after his family had had to go home. So, so we did the concert with Bob singing the melody and me singing bass. It was <laughs> one of the great experiences of my life. He took ill uh, at a festival that they were at in, uh, in Brooklyn, in, I think it was 2002, and was in hospital for a couple of days. Tony and I visited him in hospital. He was recovering. And so we sat in his hospital room and sang this song with and to him. He sat there with this huge grin on his face. It was a really wonderful experience. And this is, this is one that everybody can join in on, thousands or more. I've got to find a C sharp from somewhere. Yeah, there's a, and, oh, the man with the key. Yeah. Ring out bells of no, 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 the time. Next. Next. The time passes over more cheerful and gay since we've learned a new and to drive sorrows away. Sorrows away. Sorrows away. Rain. 
rich and although I'm not poor, I'm as happy as those that's got thousands or more. Thousands or more. Thousands or more. Thousands or more. I'm as happy as those that's got We're going to take a short break. The, uh, the Tony Memorial Megastore is, uh, <laughs> is, is, is open for those in the hall, and uh, we'll see you all again in a few minutes. Thank you.
December 2nd. Got a little notes now because, well, I screwed up that intro pretty well earlier. <laughs> um, coming up soon in, in this, this is, Zeke is the last concert of the fall season. But coming up in January, we have a number of UK live streams, some really good ones. Dave Weber, Annie Fentiman, Jez Lowe, Archie Fisher, Martin Carthy, Bob Fox, and Billy Mitchell. Um, and then in person, we've got, it, it's a long list, but I'll name a few. Moira Nahasig, try saying that fast three times, and Chris, Chris Newman, Joe Jenks, the Nordic Fiddler's Block, Nicholas, Nicholas Bolarus from Le Vendre Nord, along with Frederick Sampson and many others. So there'll be things going out about all these concerts. Please do avail yourselves of the live streams because everything that we do here will be live streamed. And we'd like to thank the Dance Flurry organization for loaning us the equipment that we've been using for the live stream. <laughs> We are in the process of getting our own, but you know, things take time. So thanks to Dan's Flurry organization. Well, without any further ado, I will hand you back to all those lovely people I misnamed before. <laughs> <laughs> we only know each other for more than 30 years, so here they are. Well, here's me anyway. <laughs> Oh, Heather's here. Too. Let's see. I need. Sweeney Todd. Yes, I know. I need that. And that can go back there. One of the things that Tony and I have done quite a lot of is, is music hall songs of one form or another. Yes. Yeah. I'm, in 1972, uh, excuse me, well, it was actually 1974, uh, Tony put on and organized a costumed music hall uh, show, in a, an evening at the English Music Hall with a cast of stars and me. Um, <laughs> David Jones, Murray Callahan, Lou Killen was part of it. And this was all facilitated by Andy Spence, and I'm going to give a big shout out for yes. Andy because <laughs> specifically for this, because at that time the Troy Music Hall, which is one of the best acoustic spaces in the Northeast, was disused for whatever reason. The bank uh, didn't want the added security problems of having it open. It was disused. Andy persuaded the bank that was in there at the time to open it for this show, for this one show. And she got a crew of volunteers together. They cleaned the place out, <laughs> dusty. And, and in 1974, we put on an, an evening at the English Music Hall, which, 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 which she produced. We filled the place with 1,200 people. The majority of whom were wearing costume. <laughs> we had a, a wonderful pianist with us, the late Jan Oosting, and, uh, and, and, and we, put on, we put on this show. Tony's big song. Heckler's in the balcony, too. What was in the balcony? Heckler's. Heckling. Oh, yes. oh, well, of course. It's traditional. <laughs> it was traditional. It, it, it was planned, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Tony sang this song in that, in that program, and later, many years later, uh, we uh, were asked to do it again for a, for a, radio, uh, a radio type of uh, a radio drama. It actually won awards, but uh, if I tell you what it is, you'll know, you'll know what the song is. But uh, so. And for this, for this, I, I had to work out a concertina part because I was all he'd got. <laughs> and unfortunately, we haven't got Tony now, so I'm all you've got. <laughs> but this. More than enough, John. <laughs> I, I wasn't fishing for that. You're so, so, <laughs> so there, here we go. Hit 
Fleet Street. That's in London town, when King Charles he wore the crown. There lived a man of great renown, it was Sweeney Todd the barber. One shave from him and you'd want no more, you'd feel his razor sharp. Then tumble wallop through the floor, wake up playing a harp and singing Sweeney Todd. Better than the play, sweet father. I'll polish him off. He used to say, "It's climbing through the floor with smoke." But he had no fear of the hangman's rope. Dead men can't talk with their mouths full of soap. Said sweet father. Now underneath the shop, it's true, where the bodies tumble through. There lived a little widow who loved Sweeney Todd the barber. She made a living by selling pies. Her meat pies were a treat, chock full of meat and such a size. Cause she was getting the meat from Mr. Sweeney Todd the barber. And there's many a poor young orphan lad at the first square meal he ever had. A hot meat pie made out of his dad <laughs> from the sweet of the barn. It was Saturday night in old Sweeney Todd's shop, and the customers sat in a row while behind the rug. Sweeney shaved some poor man, and his sweetheart made pies down below. Though none were aware it were cut prices there, they were rolling up in twos and threes, and his foot got quite sore, pressing knob on the floor. And his voice went from saying, next please. Well in came a swell and he said to old Sweeney, just a shave and a perfume shampoo, but I've just got engaged. Sweeney just pressed the knob and said, there, now it's all fallen through. <laughs> Next, a bookmaker sat with his mouth full of soap, said they're all back in favourites today. So I expect I'll go down. Sweeney said, yes you will. And he did, he went down straight away. But what rotten luck, the darn trap went and stuck. For the inn he'd forgotten to grease And a crutch customer ran to the door crying police Just as Sweeney was saying, next please Yes, he ran to the door and he shouted out police He shouted police nine times or ten But no police came Wasn't no wonder Police weren't invented by then <laughs> Old Bow Street runners, who's are, and he had to let many a pie burn, and they took him to quad. And next day, Sweeney Todd was condemned to be switched off at Tyburn. And there in the gibbet, he hangs in his chains, and they do say a little black crow made a sweet little nest in old Sweeney Todd's whiskers, and he sang. As he swam to and fro, sweet are the barber. By God, he were better than the play. Sweet are the barber. They buried him underneath the clay, and old Nick calls him from his grave. Saying, wake up, Sweeney, I need a shave. And Mrs. Nick wants a permanent wave from Sweeney Tom the Mother. Tony was that he
came from the wrong side of the Pennines. <laughs> That's the mountain range that runs up the middle of the north of England. I was born on the right side uh, in Sheffield. And uh, he was in Yorkshire, and he was born in Lancashire, but we didn't... He was born in Lincolnshire. Was he? Yeah. Uh, I thought he was born in Lancashire. Wait. Oh, well, all right. No, it was a fake accent. <laughs> no. He was an actor. <laughs> Fine. I've, I've just revised my opinion. There goes that introduction. <laughs> Anyway, Tony used to recite these monologues that were sort of from Lancashire. And I, I recited my first one when I was eight at a school concert, so I think I predate him on this. But anyway, this is about a piece of English history that absolutely everyone should know. Okay. I'll tell of the Battle of Hastings. As happened in days long gone by, when Duke William became King of England, an owl got shot in the eye. It was this way. One October morning, the Duke, who were always at top, had no battles on at that moment, so he'd given his lads the day off. They'd all taken boats and gone fishing when someone whispered in Conqueror's ear, Let's go and put Breeze up at Saxons. Bill said, by good, that's an idea. <laughs> so calling his cohorts together, he lifted his big Norman voice, shouting, hands up, who's coming to England? That was swank, because they hadn't no choice. <laughs> <laughs> At quarter to... Uh, the... Anyway, they set they off. They started away about tea time. They started away about tea time. <laughs> and seeing the sound calm and so still, quarter to ten the next morning they'd arrived at a place called Beck's Hill. King Harold came up as they landed, his face full of venom and hate. He said, if you've come for regatta, you got here just six weeks too late. Then William arose, cool but haughty, and said, let's have none of your cheek. You'd best have your throne reupholstered. I'll be wanting to use it next week. <laughs> when Harold heard this in defiance, with rage he turned purple and blue, and he shouted some rude words in Saxon, to which William answered, and you. <laughs> it was a wonderful day for a battle. Norman set out with a will, and when both sides was duly assembled, they tossed to the top of the hill. King Harold, he won the advantage. On the hilltop, he took up his stand with his knaves and his cads all around him. On his horse, with his horse, in his hand. <laughs> well, kickoff was sharp at 2.30, and after the whistle had went, both sides started banging each other till swineherds could hear him in Kent. Now, Normans had best line of forwards, well armed both with buckler and sword, but Saxons had best combination. So when half time came, neither had scored. <laughs> Calling his cohorts together, Bill said, let's pretend that we're beat. Once we get Saxons down off at Hilltop, we'll cut off their means of retreat. So they ran, and Saxons ran after just exactly as William had planned, leaving Harold alone on the hilltop. On his, on his horse, horse, with, with his, his horse, horse, in his hand. When William saw what had happened, a bow and an arrow he drew. He went right up to Harold and shot him. He were offside, but what could they do? <laughs> Normans turned round in a fury and gave back both parry and thrust to fight were all over by shouting and he couldn't see Saxons for dust. And after the battle were over, they found Harold so stately and grand, sitting there with an eye full of arrow on his, on his horse, horse, with his sword in his hand. They're working us hard tonight. We're working, yeah. So, coming back to Peter Bellamy's setting of Kipling's poetry, this is the very first one that Tony and I did, and we put it uh, on one of one of our albums. 
suitably called A Present from the Gentleman. Is that, that's a line from this song, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because that's interesting, because usually we use a line from a different song as a title. <laughs> we use lines from songs that we haven't recorded yet, and then we put, then we put them on the next, it was a, on the next album. It was a fancy marketing trick <laughs> that we developed. But this is Kipling's uh, Smuggler's Song. John mentioned earlier that, um, that I was lucky to live across, right across the street from Tony for over 25 years. Um, I can tell you, I did not um, suggest singing with Tony right away. It took me a while to work up the courage to, to do that. Uh, but when I did, Tony was enthusiastic and he was ready with a concept. And as I think Fred mentioned earlier, Tony was always a guy with a, he was an idea guy, you know, and he loved, he loved a project. And the project that he had in mind for us was to work on this repertoire of songs from the Atwood family, this family of singers who'd lived just outside Brattleboro in the early 1900s. 
So Tony and I started learning some of the songs, but meanwhile, Tony started going down a dozen rabbit holes of research, <laughs> researching the genealogy of the family and looking into the woman who collected the songs, Edith Sturgis, and finding her descendants and contacting that family, and, and, um, and then finding papers that Margaret MacArthur had collected relating to the family, going to the Folk Life Center. And so um, Tony and I produced a CD uh, of these songs after a few years, but Tony just kept going on this research. I, I have to say that Tony's research was aided and abetted by our uh, fellow Cornelian who came to us, came to Marlboro, Vermont with us in 1972, a friend of ours, Tom Tolino, who is <laughs> receiving applause because he's here this evening. <laughs> And so he should, because he did an awful lot of work on that project. That's true, yeah. One of Tony's favorite songs from that collection was uh, Rain or Dine. Rain or Dine, this famous character um, of kind of mysterious, a mysterious character, uh, perhaps with some supernatural powers, um, perhaps part man, part fox, uh, charming, but perhaps uh, kind of dangerous. And I know um, one of the uh, little um, uh, Tony had a lot of great stories that he loved to tell about Rainer Dunn, but one of them actually related to a performance of John and Tony, because of course John and Tony also had sung this song in earlier years. And you had done a concert at one point, and someone in the audience did a sketch of Tony as Rainer Dine. <laughs> Uh, which kind of freaked out Tony's family because you know, <laughs> the idea of actually having Rain or Dine living in the house with me, that could be a little unsettling. Anyway, but Tony did love telling all of these different versions of um, Rain or Dine folklore. And, um, so we'll do this one. <laughs> If you do, they'll cause my ruin and free. 
pretty fair maidens, take my advice from me. Be sure you go at night walking and shun bad company. For if you do, you'll sure be brew until the day you die. turned it into a We're Fox song. Um, there's a line in his version that says, um, his teeth did brightly shine, and he smiled to gaze upon her, did that sly bold Reynard dine. Of course, Reynard is also a traditional name for a fox. So it was easy. And we don't have werewolves in England because we got rid of the weirs, so why not a werefox? I thought, I thought there were werewolves in London, wasn't there? <laughs> you mean that, that wasn't true? It was Warren Zevon, what do you want? <laughs> so one of the things that we did early on, as well as singing the two-part copper songs, what else was easy to learn? Well, sea songs and sea shanties, because only one person has to learn the verses and the other person could sing the chorus and things like that. So we did a lot of sea songs and sea shanties and stuff like that. And we, we went to, uh, before we started, actually before we had our very first gig to get, sort of paid gig together, which was, uh, we had to drive to New Bedford from Ithaca and made $25. <laughs> <laughs> and gas was cheaper then. <laughs> but but we, we went to the Fox Hollow Folk Festival in the summer of 1969. And, and one of the things that we were doing there with other people was singing late night sea shanties around the gazebo. And we heard all these voices and uh, David Jones, some of you will know David Jones, uh, was there and he said, you know, for the next, all the next weekend, we were trying to identify the voices of the people that were there singing sea songs and chanties at that time. One of the people was Cliff Haslam, <laughs> my friend Cliff. <laughs> If you're ever in Essex, Connecticut on a Monday night, Cliff, uh, I, how many decades? Fifty. Fifty. Fifty decades. That's a decades. Five. Cliff's in Cliff sings, Cliff sings, he Cliff sings, he sang solo to start with, he now, he now has a group of supporters who sing with him, and he's there at the old Griswold Inn every Monday night. It's a wonderful tradition. And this year, for the first time, because Mystic threw away their folk festival, their sea music festival, a group of people got it together again in Essex, and we had a really great time. So, watch the next year. Connecticut Sea Music Festival. So, we don't need an excuse to sing another Copper Family song, but this is a nautical Copper Family song that we, Tony and I would often start concerts or sets of sea songs with this one. Oh, if I can find a C, a C, a C, a C. I think that's an E flat. Is it? It's a different train. It's a different train, yeah. The, the, the last one you said was a B. This was a This, this one was a B minus. <laughs> so, oh, no, yeah. Adieu. Adieu. Come on. Oh. Adieu, sweet, lovely Nancy, ten thousand times adieu. I'm a going around the ocean, love to seek for something new. Come change your ring with. 
me, dear God, come change your ring with me. For it might be a token of true love while I am on the sea. While I am far upon the sea, who knows not where I am. Kind letters I will write to you from every foreign land. The secrets of your mind, dear girl, are the best of my goodwill. So let my body be where it might, my heart is with you still. There's a heavy storm arising, see how it gathers round. While we poor sailors are on the sea, are fighting for the crown. Our officer commanded us, and him we must obey. Expecting every moment all to get cast away. There are tinkers, tailors, and shoemakers lie snoring in their sleep. While we poor souls on the ocean wide are ploughing through the deep. There's nothing to defend us, love, nor to keep us from the cold. On the ocean wide where we must fight, like jolly seamen bold. But when the wars are over, there'll be peace on every shore. We will drink to our wives and our children and the girls that we adore. We'll call for liquor merrily and spend our money free. And when our money it is all gone, we'll boldly go to sea. So adieu, sweet, lovely Nancy, ten thousand times adieu. I'm a going around the ocean, love to seek for something new. Come change your ring with me, dear girl, come change your ring with me. For it might be a token of true love, while I am on the sea. Adieu, sweet, lovely night. <laughs> From the wonderful Pepper And of course, we couldn't do without a shanty. Exactly. I was going to say, uh, I, I had a kind of a very graphic um, reminder, just like the scale of, of Tony's contributions. Uh, helping the, with the family a little bit, boxing up a lot of his collections for the Library of Congress, which is where a lot of his uh, research material, his writings and papers and uh, his recordings of events and videos in God knows how many different formats. Good luck, Library of Congress. <laughs> <laughs> but closer to home, it, one, of, uh, one of Tony's uh, big contributions in later years was the running of our pub sing, uh, our monthly pub sing in, in Brattleboro. And uh, that became a thriving thing in no small part to Tony being the, the center of that, of that event every month. So yes, we'll do another shanty, another favorite shanty of Tony's. Uh, heave away me, Johnny. Always remember, sailors were not picked for their vocal ability. <laughs> so if you were one of those people who was told in your high school, don't sing, just mouth the words, forget it, you can sing. Trust me. <laughs> As I walked out one summer's morn down by the salt house docks, heave away me Johnny's, heave away. Me being an emigrant Irish boy conversing with Tap Scott and the way he pulled me boys, we're all bound to go. Good morning, Mr. Tap Scott, sir. Good morning, sir, says me. Heave away, me Johnny's. Heave away. It's have you got any packet ships bound for America? 
And away, me bully boys, we're all bound to go. Oh, yes, I've got some packet ships, I have got one or two. Hey, away, me Johnnies, hey, me away. I've got the Ginny Walker, and I've got the Kangaroo. And away, me bully boys, we're all bound to go. Sometimes we're bound for Newfoundland, sometimes we're bound for France. Hey, the way, me Johnnies, hey, the way. But now we're bound for Voorheesville to give the girls a dance. And the way, me bully boys, we're all bound to go. The day was fine when we set sail, the night had barely come. Hey, the way, me Johnnies, hey, Can't never cease to wish himself at home. And away, me bully boys, we're all bound to go. That night, as we were sailing up the channel of St. James, hey, the way, me Johnnies, hey, the way. The dirty northwest wind come up and it blew us back again. And away, me bully boys, we're all Snugged her up and laid her to with reef made topsail set. Hey, away, me Johnnies, hey, me away. I tell you, boys, it was no joke when our bunks and clothes was wet. And away, me bully boys, we're all bound to go. But it cleared up fine at break of day, and we set sail once more. Hey, away, me Johnnies, hey, Shore was glad to reach America's shore. And the way we bully boys, we're all bound to go. Now I'm in Philadelphia and working on the canal. Hey, the way, me Johnnies, hey, the way. To go back home in a packet ship, I swear I never shall. And the way we bully boys, we're all bound to go. On a national ship that carries both steam and sail. Heave away, me Johnnies, heave, heave away. With lashings of corned beef every day and none of your yellow meal. And away, me bully boys, we're all bound to go. One of the projects that we did um, was a sea music festival with Rebels. Um, a, we did a spring show with them. We did a, uh, a, a, a and a sea music uh, show with them. We, we never really worked with Rebels. The very first year we started Noel Sing We Clear, we had a short program, and and we we danced with rebels. We danced. We Morris danced and uh, sword danced and sang with Rebels North, which is in uh, in Hanover at Dartmouth uh, College. But for the Spring Rebels, we also made a, a recording with them. And one of the songs that we picked was a setting of the Henry Newbolt poem about one of the great English heroes, uh, Sir Francis Drake. And the setting of that poem was by our friend Heather Wood. So, uh, so, so she's, she's gonna sing it. <laughs> right. So, trick question. Who was in charge of the British fleet when the Spanish Armada showed up in 1588? Nobody. It wasn't Drake, it was Effingham. Effingham. But anyway. <laughs> Drake is in his hammock and a thousand miles away. Captain Arthur sleeping there below, slung between the round shot in Nombre Dios Bay, and dreaming all the time of Plymouth Hoe. Yonder looms the island, 
Yonder lie the ships with sail lights dancing heel and toe, and the shore lights flashing and the night tide crashing. He sees it all so plainly as he saw it long ago. Drake, he was a Devon man and sailed the Devon seas, captain of those sleeping there below. Roving though his death fell, he went with heart at ease and dreaming all the time of Plymouth Hull. Take my drum to England, hang it by the shore, Strike it when your powder's running low. If the dawn sight Devon, I'll quit the port of heaven and drum them up the channel as we drummed them long ago. Drake is in his hammock till the great armadas come. Captain, art thou sleeping <coughs> there below? Slung between the round shot, listening for the drum and dreaming all the time of Plymouth Hoe. Call him on the deep sea, call him up the sound, call him when your powder's running low. Where the old flag's flying and the old trade is plying, they'll find him where and wakeful as they found him long ago. The legend goes that when England is in trouble, if you stand on, on Plymouth Hoe, which is a, a, a grass uh, area overlooking Plymouth Harbour, and, and listen, you can still hear Drake's drum coming to bail England out. They could really use him now. <laughs> so one of the songs, when, when we did sing sea songs, one of Tony's favorite songs was this version of uh, The Mermaid. Now, th there are two well-known versions of The Mermaid. In England, this is the one that's best known, and I think we learned it at school, didn't we? Yeah. Um, here, the, the, uh, the Clancy Brothers version, I think, is probably the best known. How does that one go? Yeah. Um, not a good idea. I get confused. So the chorus of this one goes, Oh, the raging sea, somewhere like that. Raging seas did roar, and the stormy winds did blow. And we jolly sailor boys were up, for up, 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 and the land love is lying down below, below. So you know this version too, right? <laughs> well, see how Tony's influence has yes. spread. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this is the way uh, this is the way Tony did. One Friday morn, when we set sail and a ship not far from the land, then we spied a mermaid sitting on the rock with the comb and the glass in her hand. hand, hand. With the comb and the glass in her hand And the raging seas did roar And the stormy winds did blow One of each of the sailor boys were up, were up, were up And the landlords lie down below, below, below And the landlords lie down below And then up spoke the helmsman of a ship in his hand, a land and a line. Oh, hard to sound the seas, me boys, that is so wide and deep, but no hard rock, no sand could he find, he find, he find, no hard rock or sand could he find. And the raging seas did roar, and the stormy winds did blow. Why do we jolly sailor boys were up, were up aloft, and The captain of the ship and a well-spoken man was he. 
Says I have a wife and boys in fair Bristol town And tonight it's a widow she will be, will be, will be And tonight it's a widow she will be And the rain she sees it roar And the stormy winds did it blow While we jump say the boys were up for a walk And the landlord's lying down below, below, below The first mate of a ship and a well-spoken man was he. Says I have a son and daughter in fair Plymouth town, and tonight it's orphans they will be, will be, will be. Tonight it's orphans they will be, and the rain is The little cabin boy and the pretty little boy was he. Says I, how I grieve for me old mother dear. That's a fear I never more shall see, shall see, shall see. That's a fear I never more shall see. And the rage seems to grow, and the stormy winds did blow. We jolly say the boys were up for a love dance. Then three times round went a gallant ship, three times round went she. Yes, three times around went a gallant ship, and she sank to the bottom of the sea, the sea, the sea, and she sank to the bottom of the sea. And the raging seas did roll, and the stormy winds did blow, while we jumped sail. towards the end oh. and uh, I want to give a, a shout out to uh, to my partner Lisa Preston who had a lot to do with the uh, putting together of this show which I couldn't have done on my own so thanks to her <laughs> Lisa's listening at home she's uh, <laughs> so Tony heard this song, it's a, it's a Tennyson poem that uh, Rani Arbo uh, set to music and it became very popular. Peter Amidon, also of Brattleboro, uh, did a lovely choral setting of it and uh, Keith has recorded it among others. I, I sang it at my mother's funeral. So did I. So did you. That's a good few years ago now. So uh, we're going to do uh, Tennyson's Crossing the Bar. Sunset and evening star, one clear call for me. May there be no moaning of the 
Such a tide is turning, seems asleep, too full for sound and foam. When that which drew from out the boundless deep turns again home, turns again. Sadness of farewell when I embark. When I embark, when I embark, may there be no sadness of farewell when I In the spirit of Tony, who in his latter years, as we know, was in a wheelchair and couldn't get off the stage to do before an encore to come back, we appreciate the encore and we'll do it without leaving. <laughs> it's the, a much uh, better system. It's a much better system. So, 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 so this is it. Thank you so much, all of you, for being here. And thank you so much to all the people who've been listening to the stream, watching the stream. We really appreciate it. 
I'm sure somebody's there looking down in heaven singing along. So, uh, I'm so well, it would be if there is a heaven, but. Yeah. <laughs> My new religion, we all go to a big party. <laughs> the only one to help. Thank you also to all the Old Songs volunteers. Yes, all indeed. Here. look forward to this year next year's festival yeah so this one seems appropriate this is uh, again it's it's Kipling uh, set by Peter Bellamy it's uh, a poem about saying goodbye to a fallen comrade so call, follow me home There was no one like him, or saw foot, nor any of the guns I knew. And because that it was so, why of course he went and died, to just what the best men do. So it's a knock at your pipes and ball of me. goes with the bombardier before her month is through and the bands are up in church cause she's got the better of it which is just what a girl would do so it's a knock at your pipes and follow me finish up your swipes and follow me heart in the big drum about a dog last week it was no more than a round or two but I struck him pretty hard and I wished I had a man which is just too late to do so it's a Cause it's three rounds like the 
Thank you all for coming. Next, next month is Z, right here in this wonderful space. Many hands make light work, so if you wouldn't mind folding your chairs and down the middle, half to that side, half to that side, and thank you so much for coming.